asteroidal impact on Earth. The Earth on 29th April is experiencing a gaze by an asteroid. This asteroid passes close to Earth and it was speculated that it may hit the Earth. Asteroidal impact was a normal event on Earth billions of years back, not now. What are asteroids, what are their impact can be and whether they are beneficial or not is being explained to you by Earth scientist Sri K. Siddhartha. Asteroids are found mainly in the asteroidal belt between Mars and Jupiter. Sometimes their orbits get perturbed or altered and some asteroids end up coming closer to the Sun and therefore closer to the Earth. Asteroids are sometimes referred to as minor planets or planetoids, but in general they are rocky bodies that do not have an atmosphere. However, a few have their moons. Our solar system contains millions of such type of asteroids, many of which are thought to be short remnants of planetesimals, that is, bodies within the young sun's solar nebula that never grew up large enough to become planets. Some asteroids have orbits that cross the orbit of the Earth. This means that the Earth will be hit sometime. Recent studies have shown that the Earth has been hit at an alarming large number of times in the past. One large impact is now thought to have contributed to the quick demise of dinosaurs about 65 million years ago because that led to a series of events that was ultimately responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. The huge, potentially hazardous asteroid 1998 OR2, that means 1998 OR2, safely flows by Earth on 29th April and it had a crude encounter with our pandemic ridden planet. Puerto Rico's Arequibo Observatory has been monitoring the asteroid's approach and recently released new images of the giant space rocket which appears to have to know that the planet is going to be facing the pandemic and consequently spared it. The small scale topographic features such as hills and ridges on the end of a asteroid 1998 OR2 are really significant and they are fascinating as well. Due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, Arequibo astronomers uh, had had to conduct most radio observations uh, remotely. However, planetary radar observations uh, require at least one radar operator and one scientist to be on the side of the observatory. The limited staff present at the observatory are required to wear masks uh, and follow other guidelines uh, for preventing the spread of the novel coronavirus. Uh, which causes the respiratory disease COVID-19. Although it poses a threat to the Earth during its flyby on 29th of April, that is Wednesday, asteroid 1998 OR2 is classified as a potentially hazardous object because it is rather hefty space rock whose orbit intersects with the Earth's orbit at a distance of less than 4.6 million miles or 7.5 million kilometers or something like some 0.05 astronomical unit or AU, the average distance between the Earth, Earth and the Sun. The asteroid fly by the Earth at a distance of 3.9 million kilometers on April 29th. Using a new imagery from the Archibo Observatory, astronomers have estimated that a asteroid 1998 OR2 has a diameter of approximately 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers of South Sea. The imagery also revealed that the asteroid rotates about once every 4.1 hours. While the asteroid currently poses no threat to the Earth, observations by the Archibo Observatory will allow scientists to more accurately predict the asteroid's future trajectory which will sweep the Earth another 12 times this century, as per NASA. Only two of these approaches in 2079 and 2127 will bring the asteroid closer to the Earth than this year's flyby. The closest encounter will be on April 26, 2079 when an asteroid 1998 OR2 will come within 1.1 million or 1.8 million kilometers of the Earth or roughly 4.6 times the average Earth-Moon size. 
Although this asteroid is not projected to impact the Earth, it is important to understand the characteristic of these type of objects eh, and what will be the possible impact on Earth eh, as well as to improve the impact risk eh, mitigation technologies. Eh. One of this impact is going to be associated with eh, creating a hole in the atmosphere. On its way to the impact, eh, the asteroid pushes aside the air in front eh, of it eh, creating a hole in the atmosphere. The atmosphere above the impact site is removed for several tens of seconds before the surrounding air can go to rush back into fill the gap material from the impact that is a vaporized asteroid crustal material and oceanic water if it lands on the ocean escapes through the hole and follows a ballistic flight back down in two minutes after the impact about 105 cubic kilometers of ejecta that is equivalent to 1000 tons of salt is lofted to about 100 kilometers into the atmosphere. Second is the thermonuclear warhead effect. The largest yield of a thermonuclear warhead is around 50 to 100 megatons. The kinetic energy of the falling object is converted to the explosion when it hits. The 10 kilometer object produces an explosion of a 6 into 107 megatons of TNT that is equivalent to an earthquake of the magnitude of a 12.5 on the Richter scale and mind it Richter scale is a logarithmic scale that means that what is 8 and 8.1 is a difference of almost 100 times 8.1 to 8.2 is going to be again another 100 times from 8.1 onwards so 12.4 on the Richter scale means that the whole of the earth will be shaking in this case. The third effect is going to be associated with generation of a tsunami. The oceans cover about 75% of the earth's surface. So it is likely that asteroid will hit an ocean rather than land. The asteroid will push the water aside and hit the ocean floor to create a huge crater. The Water pushed aside will form a tsunami, a mega tsunami, a tsunami where waves will be as high as something like some 1.2 to 2 kilometers as well. The steam blast from the water at the crater side rushing back over the hot crater floor will also produce tsunami following the initial impact. That is, a, the steam is blasted from the water at the crater side and that Rush, that water goes into rush back to a hot crater floor and that is going to be a counter tsunami in this case. Then it will go on to lead to extreme explosions as well. If the asteroid hits the ocean, the surrounding water returning over the hot crater floor is vaporized, sending more water into the air as well as causing huge steam explosions. Global fire storm will be another of this impact. The material ejected from the impact through the hole in the atmosphere will re-enter all over the globe and heat up from friction with the atmosphere. The chunks of material will be hot enough to produce a lot of infrared light. The heat from the glowing material will start fires around the whole of the globe and this fire will be extending at a speed of, can you imagine, something like some 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers of salt. An asteroidal impact will go on to lead to a rain effect. The heat from the shock wave of the entering asteroid and reprocessing of the air close to the impact produces nitric nitrous acids over the next few months to one year of a time. Atmospheric NO2 is converted to nitric and nitrous acids when it is mixed with water. These are really nasty acids. They will wash out of the air when it rains. That is normal. But a worldwide deluge of acid rain that will go on to follow, of course, when it is going to be washed out, it is going to be having a damaging effect. And how? It will go on to be associated with the destruction or damage of the foliage. There will be greater amount of weathering of the continental rock. The upper ocean organisms are going to be killed and these organisms are responsible for locking up carbon dioxide in their shells that is in form of calcium carbonate that will eventually become limestone. 
However, the shells will dissolve in the acid water, that along with the impact winter that is a in the course of this impact, the whole of the temperature of the earth will go on to come down. So this impact winter will go on to kill of 90% of all the marine nanoplankton species. The ozone layer is just reacting with the NO as well and the amount of ultraviolet light hitting the surface increases killing small organisms and plants here. that is key parts of the food chain. The N2 causes a respiratory damage in larger animals and not to speak of the harmful elements like beryllium, mercury, thallium, all of which will be let loose. The steroidal impact is going to create an impact winter, that is the temperature effects. All of the dust in the air from the impact and soot from the fires will block the sun. The dramatic decrease of sunlight reaching the surface produces a dramatic short term global reduction in temperature that is called as an impact winter. Plant photosynthesis stops and the food chain collapses. The cooling is followed by a much more prolonged period of increased temperature due to large increase in the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is increased because of the increase of the carbon dioxide and water vapor in the air. The carbon dioxide level rises because the plants are burnt and most of the planktons are wiped out. Also, water vapor in the air from the impact stays a lot for a while, but the temperatures are too warm for a comfort for a while. While asteroidal impact has a likelihood of increasing the damages to the earth and it is always going to be hazardous to the earth, it is going to be one of these type of disasters. But can you imagine the asteroids do go to be having a lot of beneficial impact on the earth, they can have it. A lot of beneficial impacts have already been caused and they are likely to have even more. The near-earth asteroids are the most worrisome ones for possible impact, but they could be potentially very beneficial to the Earth if it could mine them for rare metals and use the asteroid for convenient stepping stones to manned exploration of the solar system, especially traveling to Mars. Now, you must have known that this is what Japan is doing it so and they have landed one of uh, their uh, spacecrafts uh, on an asteroid. The near-earth asteroids are relatively abundant in heavy metals like iron and nickel and the platinum group metals uh, like platinum, palladium, rhodium, uh, ruthenium, uh, osmium and iridium used in modern technology. In fact, uh, all of the heavy metals in the Earth's crust uh, come from an uh, asteroid impact uh, for after the Earth differentiated. Moreover, the water from the asteroid could also be broken down into oxygen and hydrogen and can, can be used as a rocket fuel as well. Historical impact is something to relish, it is something to imagine, something to enjoy, unless it goes on to hit the earth. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more such updates. Like and share the video and let us know your queries in the comment section below.